Me and my friend decided we want to make a medieval physics-based sword fighting co-op roguelike VR game and release it on Steam. The problem though is that I have never released a game on Steam before, never even made a multiplayer game matter of fact, and my friend I'm doing this with hasn't even opened a game engine. Yet. But he is determined to learn it very fast, so... <laughs> Don't let nothing stop you, cause we ain't stop A wise man once told me a plan is only as good as the plan itself. I guess. So we started with a good old Miro board and started brainstorming. We started taking some screenshots from Pinterest for the art style, wrote down some features we wanted to have in the game and yeah, basically progressed, pro prograstinate, progress, procrastinated. But we still ended up with the basic concept. So basically the game is happening around this point of interest, the Nexus. And you as a team have to defend the Nexus against enemy waves which want to destroy it. By killing an enemy, you will receive some money and the enemy will become stronger each wave. So you will have to upgrade your gear. Which is why there is a shop and the shop will be heavily inspired by Fortnite because the shop will refresh every wave and then you will have to decide if you want to buy the offers or not. Yeah, so to sum the game loop up, it's basically defend the Nexus, kill the enemies and buy new gear. And the goal of the game is to get to the highest wave possible. And yeah, we, we thought that scope is pretty achievable and we got straight to work. We made some to-do lists we never looked at again, made some Kanban boards we never used. And that concludes our 100% foolproof plan, which we definitely did not change like a hundred times throughout the development phase. Every good project starts with creating the project, so I did just that and I created the VR template Unreal Engine already provides. Started testing around, looked through the blueprints, but noticed pretty fast that I don't really know where to start. Which is why I then started watching some YouTube tutorials, and by some I mean I ended up completely in tutorial hell. And to sum it up, I basically wasted two complete days. And the worst part is I could have avoided all that by simply researching a little bit better, I guess. Because in my second research phase I stumbled across the VR expansion template. And that plugin feels like a cheat code because it offers so much functionality you need for VR development, like different movement types, different grab types, doors are already implemented, widgets already work, you've got this distant gravity grab from Half-Life Alex you can already use. You even got the complete functionality for a working VR car. But most importantly, there was already a system implemented for melee weapons. You could have one-handed weapons, two-handed weapons, every weapon had a different feeling of weight in your hand because you can calibrate how much it swings around and so on. There also was a hit registration system which I could later use to make my damage system, which was pretty nice. So once I've understood the systems on a basic level and understood where things are and how things work, I started to migrate the assets out of the demo scene into my own project and started building from that. The first thing I wanted to add was physical interaction with the enemy skeleton, so you can push him around with your sword or your weapon of choice. And luckily Unreal Engine already provides physical animation and I simply made a component which uses the physical animation component provided by Unreal Engine to apply physics to the bones of the skeleton. And once I've done that I was able to hit the enemy and get a kind of reasonable reaction from him. I also added a basic AI controller so the enemy keeps following the player. And so the player can do something about that. I've also added a health system to the enemy and made a damage system for the weapon so it actually deals damage to the enemy. The damage is calculated by how fast the velocity of the weapon is, so the harder you swing in VR the more damage you deal. I also tried to implement a stabbing mechanic, but I couldn't really get it to work, so I just left it as it is for now. There was obviously much room for improvement, but I've decided to move on to more important things. Like for example the movement types, because the VR expansion plugin already provides a lot of them, but we only need two, so I had to remove the other ones, or at least make them non-selectable. Another very important thing was to have an actual game loop, which is why I now decided to create an enemy spawner and work on the enemy AI. 
So the enemy spawner was actually pretty easy, I just had to create a method to spawn enemies in and create an enemy queue, so the spawner knows which enemy to spawn next. The only thing which was quite complicated was the multiplayer part, because prior to this I've never made a multiplayer game, and you have to make sure that the enemy will spawn on each client and not twice on one client, for example, so that doesn't happen. But once I figured out how replication is supposed to work in Unreal Engine, it was actually pretty easy to implement. I've also added some target points on the map so the enemy spawner knows where to spawn the enemy. And that concludes the first version of the enemy spawner. So now the enemies are getting spawned in, but they don't really know what to do. So the first thing I did was to give him some perception which means that he actually has to see or hear the player to run towards him and he doesn't just know where he is. And just with that little information I was able to create the state tree. The initial state is the state where he just runs towards the nexus and once he sees a player, he starts fighting the player. I had some problems with the enemy prioritizing running to the nexus, but I eventually figured it out and obviously it was a single setting. At the moment the nexus is only a point on the map which does nothing, so to avoid all the enemies scattering around it I created this cool cube which just kills you if you touch it. And now that I had enemies which can be spawned and can die, I started to create the game mode and the game state, so basically the game logic, but I somehow managed to do everything on my second monitor so I can't show you anything but to sum up what's happening in the game mode and the game state uh, in these classes is getting track which wave currently is running if a wave is running how many enemies are remaining and if the game is over and most importantly the game mode manages that this information is replicated for every user and once I've had all these components together like the game loop the nexus the enemy spawner and so on I started to create a prototype map with my awesome map design skills just to get a feeling on how the game could feel in the end. At that point I already was pretty tired of having that VR handset on my head all the time so I only tested in the emulator way which made absolutely no sense but all the systems which were non-VR related worked so a win is a win I guess. The only big system missing now is the shop system so I started working on that. At the moment it's pretty simple, it's just a button and if you press it the game checks if you have enough balance and if so it spawns the weapon and if not it doesn't. And once I've worked up the courage again to enter the VR world, I started testing around with uh, stabbing again and actually got it to work this time. It's still pretty janky but it works. Which was awesome, so the only logical next step was to restart the whole project. You may ask yourself why? And let me explain. So after adding the stabbing, I still worked in the project for like a week or so, but I wasn't really able to implement new features because all the other systems are not scalable and the code is basically mom's spaghetti. So I had the option to refactor the whole thing or just restart the project and I thought restarting the project might be the better solution because by just working on the old one I gained a lot of knowledge about multiplayer and VR so I decided it was the best option to restart everything and I did just that. But before we get to that we have to talk about something else because you may remember that I'm doing this with a friend of mine who has never developed a game before but at that point in development he has already made some progress on the map. We started out by sketching out the map, so we have a basic idea on how the landscape should be shaped and how the map should be structured. And once we've done that, Steny took the screenshot, put it into Unreal Engine and started landscaping and blocking out the basic map layout. We wanted to give the feeling that the player has to defend their own castle, so we just made one entrance where all the battles would take place and have the castle where the shop station, the nexus etc is in and you just have to defend it. And after the blocking out phase, Steny noticed that he would need some assets to finish the map, so he had some options, open blender or open the fab store. Yeah, to sum up what happened, Steny basically wanted to focus in his first project on completely making the map and not creating the assets for the map. We wanted to have the game in a stylized or low poly look, so he went ahead and scouted the fab store for some free stylized modular building packs and started building with those. And in the beginning it looked quite promising, but after some time he noticed that some parts are missing, which is why he then went ahead and imported some other asset packs. And if you take too many asset packs, especially modular building asset packs, the game will look a bit Frankenstein-y in the end, and that's not good. 
And he decided he wanted to fix his problems by just throwing money at it, so he scouted the fab store once more and stumbled across a Sinti pack which basically contained everything we needed and he bought it. It included some character models, a lot of weapons and a lot of map building pieces he could use to then create the map and most importantly everything fit together and was in the same style. And in addition to the Sinti pack, he also bought a dynamic skybox which offers different weathers and different times and just looks good. I would spare you the details of the complete remake. To sum it up, I just remade all the systems I've already had in a more modular, better scalable way. And I also imported the asset packs Sinti acquired and also the skybox he bought. So we were finally at the same state we were before and after that I started equipping the enemy with actual weapons and even gave them some attack animations. There were some problems if there were many enemies because they kept running into each other and with uh, physics enabled they also kept blocking each other and couldn't attack. But after my first test in VR I had the feeling the game is going in a pretty good direction because it was actually fun fighting the enemy due to you being able to physically block the sword, hit the enemy, get kind of a reaction. It obviously was very janky, but I think if we make the AI a little bit smarter, add a little bit more attack moves and just polish the fighting in general, it got some potential. And at that point Steny already had the block out for the map v2 ready. So I imported the map into the project, placed all the spawn points, the nexus, the shop etc. and started playtesting. But as expected nothing really changed because the only thing I changed was the map and I did nothing to the fighting so the enemies were still attacking you at the same time, they were still running into each other. So I had to do something about that. At the moment the enemy only had two options, run to the nexus or attack the player. And that was bad, because there was no in-between, so I added the in-between, which was the straving state, and that's just a state where the enemy keeps walking around the player until his attack cooldown is off and he can attack. And that alone already improved the gameplay so much, because you didn't have the feeling that you just got jumped by 10 people, you had the feeling you could actually fight the enemy. There still was the problem that multiple enemies at once could attack you because there was no lock that that wouldn't be allowed. So I've created a system with attack tokens and enemy AI first has to receive an attack token from the player before he can attack and the player only has like two attack tokens so only two enemies at once can attack him. I have also experimented with friendly AI but I scrapped that in the end because I didn't really feel like it fit the game that well. But what's definitely needed in the game was a full body IK for VR, which basically means that you have a full skeleton for your VR character which just gets solved by the position of your controllers and your headset. And that is definitely as complicated as it sounds, which is why I used Steny's fab addiction for my own advantage and told him we need this asset pack really really bad and yeah. <laughs> So we now have a replicated full body IK for VR just because this guy is a goddamn genius. Yeah, back to the enemy. Another thing I added to the enemy because nobody likes damage sponges, I added a blocking mechanic or a dodge mechanic, which means if you start attacking the enemy, there is a percentage chance that he will just block your hit or dash away and dodge it. And that feels pretty awesome because you've got the feeling you're actually fighting someone who does not want to die. And that's pretty important, I think, because I like Souls games. And in combination with the improved physical animations, the new attack animations the enemy now has, the fighting feels actually good and I have had quite some fun doing it. So we felt ready for the next big step. Steny had successfully turned the prototype map into a complete map filled with assets and design and looked awesome in my opinion. So we imported the new map into our project and started playtesting on the map. But unfortunately I noticed a problem right away because the whole game takes place right in front of the entrance because that's just where the enemy spawns and the player has no motivation to explore the map or just run around and find things. So we decided we need to make a change to some features of the game. And at that time we were also trying to revive Black Ops 2 Zombies in our friend group, which is why we took some inspiration from that. And the changes we made, we completely took out the Nexus, so the enemy is always running to the player. And there's a new shop system, which now consists of multiple shop stations, which are scattered around the map. 
and each wave only specific shop stations have a new offer, so the player is forced to run around each wave. In addition to that, we took out the next wave button, so the player can't restart the wave manually. The wave is just starting if the last enemy of the prior wave is dying. We also added some minor changes like a damage overlay, so the, the player can actually see if he gets hit and damage sounds. And we also added some sounds to the animation that the game feels a little bit more alive. One thing left to do to allow simple multiplayer was a Steam implementation. And I just used the advanced Steam Session plugin provided by Unreal Engine to implement that and that was actually pretty easy. So the game was ready for the first playtest in multiplayer with a ping, because in development I did not really think about high ping and things like that. So let's get to the conclusion of the playtest. The first thing I have to mention, we only have one VR headset, which is why two of the playtesters had to play in the PC emulator thing and only I was in a VR headset. But the main focus of the playtest was to test the networking with a ping, so it didn't really matter. We've had some minor bugs, like for example the enemy sliding around while attacking or slashing in the completely wrong direction. But other than that, it went quite well. Until one very important system broke completely, the aggro token system, because at some point I guess the enemy did not return the aggro token while dying, which caused the enemy to never attack. Like never, not in the next wave, never. So it means the game is basically broken after that happens which was really bad, but I didn't really like how the system was structured anyway, so I will just remake it, I think. But not in this video, because we are already three months into development. I'm quite satisfied on how far we got. I mean, the systems are obviously still pretty raw and they don't really feel that good, but with the right amount of work and time, I think we can get this game to a pretty fun state, and I'm excited on how the game will look in another three months. And if you're as excited as I am, make sure to like the video, subscribe to stay up to date for the next one and have a nice day.